as of July 16, 2020, a record 75,671 new coronavirus cases have been reported in the United States. The total number of deaths now stands over 138,000. The country lacks a national strategy on how to contain the pandemic. In the absence of adequate contact tracing, a vaccine for prevention and effective therapeutics for treatment, social distancing and wearing a face mask are the only proven means to prevent the spread of the virus. New coronavirus cases are surging in several states, making Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, and Georgia the new hotspots. When stay-at-home orders were lifted in these states, young people packed beaches, worked out in gyms, and partied in bars and restaurants. Most of them did not wear face masks or followed social distancing guidelines. With more patients being hospitalized, Shortages of healthcare workers, ICU beds, and PPEs are being reported. Arizona, Texas, and Florida are among the states that saw the sharpest increase in deaths. Governor DeSantis of Florida will not institute a statewide face mask mandate. Governor Kemp of Georgia is suing Atlanta, Savannah, and other cities that mandated wearing face masks to block them from enforcing the life-saving measure. Governor Abbott of Texas has reversed himself and mandated wearing face coverings in public. Governors of Alabama, Arkansas, and Colorado have instituted statewide masking orders in the last two days. Governor Newsom of California has ordered closure of bars and restricted indoor dining to contain the resurgence of COVID-19 in the state. Ohio had instituted sensible measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The state declared a state of emergency on March 9th and a stay-at-home order was issued on March 23rd. On May 14th, the number of infected persons in Ohio was 26,357 and on June 14th, it was 41,576. Yesterday, that is July 16th, the number has climbed to 70,600. New cases reported were under 400 a month ago, and on July 10th, it hit a record 1,525, almost a five-fold increase. Governor Mike Devine of Ohio addressed the state on Wednesday and made these remarks. He compared the number of cases in Ohio to those in Florida and Arizona and said this. On June 9th, Florida had 1,200 cases per day. About the same number of cases that we had in Ohio yesterday. This past Sunday, just one month later, Florida's case numbers were at 15,300 new cases in one day. A month ago, Florida averaged 8.3 new cases per 100,000 residents per day. A little bit under what we have in Ohio currently. As of yesterday, Florida's new cases have increased sixfold per day. 51 cases per 100,000 per day. A month ago, Arizona. Arizona was also at 1,200 new cases per day. As of Sunday, Arizona was at 3,400 new cases per day. And further, Arizona averaged almost 18 new cases per 100,000 residents per day last month. But that has increased two and a half times as of yesterday. Two and a half times. If we do not change course, Florida and Arizona will be our future. He wanted Ohioans to act now and warned them about what could happen if we fail to act. We must
must act. And we must act now. My friends, this is not a drill. This certainly is not any hoax. This is not a dress rehearsal. It's the real thing. The enemy is here, and Ohioans have simply come too far in this fight to cede ground now. Then the governor, in his measured tone of an experienced prosecutor, told Ohioans to wear a mask in public. He did not order a statewide masking order. Listen to him. Let's start with masks. I'm asking each one of you, wherever you live in Ohio, whatever county, whatever the alert color of your county, to wear a mask every time you go out in public. Now, I know some may still question the wisdom of wearing masks. But as we used to say when I was a prosecuting attorney, the jury's back. The verdict is in. There is a broad consensus today in the medical, health, and business communities that masks are critical. Yesterday, Dr. Robert Redfield, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said the following. If all of us, if all of us would put on a face covering now for the next four weeks, six weeks, we could drive this epidemic to the ground. Infected persons are not always symptomatic. Pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic persons, most of them young, are super spreaders. A face covering protects you from inhaling droplets from others and other persons from your droplets. Masks filter out majority of viral particles. Even if you inhale some, it will be a lower dose and if infected will result in less severe symptoms. Wear a face mask and carry a spare when you go out. There is evidence that coronavirus is airborne and accumulates over time indoors. People in crowded restaurants and other indoor places can transmit the virus through exhaled air. Donning a mask will help. Wash hands frequently with soap and water. Stay home if you can. Travel only if necessary. Avoiding any size gatherings, including religious services, is the most prudent thing you can do under these circumstances. If you decide to go, then wear a mask and practice social distancing. We need to ask ourselves this question. Is this absolutely necessary to have a party at a bar or to dine at a crowded restaurant? Wearing a mask should be treated as a public health matter that can save lives and should not be a partisan issue. Remember, we are all in this together, yet we are still on our own. Among the young, the symptoms of COVID-19 are mild. Most of them recover. Long-term effects are still being studied. Irreversible lung damage, referred to as post-COVID fibrosis, is a condition seen among the young survivors. Even patients as young as 30, not hospitalized for the virus, have been linked to blood clotting and strokes. Listen to Dr. Anthony Fauci's advice to the young. Is that if you get infected and spread the infection, even though you do not get sick, you are part of the process of the dynamics of an outbreak and what you might be propagating inadvertently, perhaps innocently, is infecting someone who then infects someone who then is someone who's vulnerable. That could be your grandmother, your grandfather, your sick uncle, who whom have you, who winds up dying. So it's a very difficult messaging when people say, I'm young, I'm healthy, who cares? You should care, not only for yourself, but for the impact you might have on the dynamics of the outbreak. 
in Ohio, residents of 19 counties classified as level 3 are required to wear masks in public. Cities like Akron, Dayton and Toledo have instituted their own mandates. Coronavirus does not recognize county or city lines. People of Ohio also travel across the state. When an apartment complex is on fire, the firefighters douse the whole building, not just the apartment that is burning the most. Governor Devine, you once trusted the advice of scientists and doctors like Amy Acton. You have demonstrated good leadership by ordering Ohioans to stay at home, closed gyms, bars and restaurants, and don't a mask in public. Unlike some other states, you did not open every business all at once. I watched your address to us Wednesday afternoon, expecting that you would order a statewide mandate to wear the mask. I was disappointed. Perhaps you were taking cautionary steps to educate the people and eventually make that order. Our neighboring states of Michigan, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania all have statewide masking orders. On behalf of over 2 million vulnerable senior citizens living in Ohio, I urge you to order a statewide mandate to wear face masks.